If I did that dumb thing where you just have a random clip at the start of the video, it would be this clip right here, and I'd be like, why is this car spinning so much? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today, we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Gravel Vertex NA2, also known as the Ford Focus from Automation. So this mod is a little bit absurd because it has close to 100 configurations. And normally I would never do a video for an automation mod, but this one is on a completely different level than 99% of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the most interesting versions of the vehicle available and maybe a couple of very basic ones as well. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at is with the Stig. And this is basically a normal version of the vehicle with two small modifications. So we have a logo that goes across the windshield for some reason. And then more importantly, we have the Stig inside of the car doing some driving. So let's go ahead and crash test this thing and see what it looks like when the car crashes. And then also what happens to the Stig in the event of an impact. And you can see the performance of this vehicle is nothing special. It drives like an ordinary Ford Focus, but it's fast enough to get up to 80 miles per hour and have a crash. Oh, that was perfect. We got up into the air and we also broke the engine doing so. So the whole front of the car is absolutely mangled from that because it hit it in such a weird way going upwards and such. And the Stig, well, he didn't quite wear his seatbelt, so he definitely bashed his head through the windshield, but he's a helmet on, so he's okay. How's the rest of the vehicle look? Just as you would expect, there is minimal damage to that. And if we try to open the door to help the Stig, that is one of the few places you'll realize that this is an automation vehicle because the doors do not open. That's something that happens with all automation vehicles, but everything else about this car, you barely notice that it is in fact an automation export at its base. And because we have so many different versions to take a look at, it's going to be like one crash onto the next one. One crash on to the next one. We're going to be going super fast through them and this one is quite possibly the best one there is because I don't understand it at all. This is the Hocus Pocus. There's a pizza on your vertex and it really should say focus but whatever that's close enough and then yes it's just a normal ordinary vehicle but there is a pizza on it. Why? I'm not sure. I have no idea what's going on here but I love it because I like pizza. If I like pizza, I like this. And yes, you can just take the pizza off and then say, I don't need the vehicle anymore. I have the pizza. And you pull it so hard with the node grabber, it does <laughs> that. I actually didn't know it was going to do that. I'm not even pulling it in any direction. It just keeps spinning forever. It's amazing, isn't it? All right, pizza be gone. But that's really the only difference here. The reason I have this one, though, is so we can take a look at the inside of the vehicle. Because if we tried this with the previous version, we would be inside of the Stig's helmet and you would see absolutely nothing. But now, we can see everything I want to see. So it has a lot of functionality here, like the parking brake and the shifter. They both work. And then the steering wheel, of course, works. So do the gauges and there's a light for when the traction control kicks in. And with me driving, that's all the time. And then, when you turn on the headlights, the lights light up. And if you turn the blinker on, the lever on the stock does move, and then you also got lights on the dash. But here's something that's really cool, and I don't know if I've seen this in any other vehicle. So real quickly, we're going to go ahead and make it nighttime. So nice and dark. And this is cool. So there are actually interior lights on this vehicle that you can turn on and off. So, boom, look at that. It lights up the inside of the vehicle. That is so nifty. In fact, there's actually two lights. We have the one up top, and then we have the one down here in the footwell, so you can even see the pedals move at nighttime if you really wanted to. So now we're done with nighttime, so let's go ahead and make it daytime. I don't know exactly what time it was by default, but that looks pretty close. And then we're going to go ahead and crash my Hocus Pocus. There's a pizza on your focus. Yes, I'm going to say the full name every time I reference it. And I want to make sure the crash is gentle enough where the pizza doesn't fall off. So nice and careful. Whoop. Pizza is still on. Everything is okay. We'll try to up the damage on this next one, go a little bit faster than the last time, and see, can the pizza hold on? Mamma mia, my pizza! My pizza! Well, this version of the car is done. The pizza fell off, so it is nothing to me now. Although we can use it for this next thing I want to show you. So this is a really funny version of the vehicle. This one is the invisible Vertex Mobile, and it literally is just an invisible vehicle. If you pull open the nodes, you can see the vehicle is there. But you can't see it when you're actually driving, which can be difficult at times because you don't know exactly which direction you're going. So you just kind of have to hope that the vehicle is doing what you think it's going to do, which isn't always the case. Here's where it really is hard. I'm trying to do a 180 here. Did I do a 180? I don't really know. So we reset to the camera and I did 
somewhat of a 180. So we'll go ahead and save the spot once we're straightened out, and we can actually use the tail lights to figure out what orientation we are, and if we wanted to, we could turn on the headlights, and then we always have that, but that's not the point right now. Because what I want to do is I want to crash into another vehicle while completely invisible, because I think this would be really interesting to see. In fact, what would be really cool is we do it from the driver's camera. So this is going to look really weird, but also probably look really cool. So here's 16 times slow-mo, and oh, that does look weird, but I love that. Like the car just deforms for basically no reason, and you got a beautiful view of it happening. That was great. And there is damage to the invisible vehicle. You can't tell because it's invisible, but again, if we pull up the node grabber, you'd probably see like the front bumper is all kind of messed up. Yeah, like it's hanging down here or something. But more importantly, look at that. Out of nowhere, my pizza mobile has been damaged and there's no pizza on it again. Where is your pizza? Without a pizza, you are nothing. So let's just go to another version of the vehicle. And real quickly, I'll mention there's also a version called the drivetrain view, which is very similar to the one I was just driving, but we're not gonna go into that one. Instead, we're gonna take a look at the lowrider. And I'm gonna tell you now, this lowrider is low. Just sitting statically like this, it already looks like it's scraping. And if you try to floor it, you're not gonna move very much at all. You'll also notice that it is rear wheel drive swapped in this configuration. There are a bunch of configurations that are rear wheel drive swapped. And just like that, we are almost stuck on the tiniest little bump in the road and just barely able to continue driving. But there is a solution to that. There you go, we lift just the rear end and now we got traction. It kind of works, but not really. And oh, I gotta avoid the invisible car just parked there. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna run into him, just you watch. Oh, and driving like this is not easy because I have to use the keyboard and control at the same time. Oh goodness, we can't steer. The front bumper is scraping so badly, those front wheels have like no traction at all. Oh no, what do you do in this situation? You know what? Instead of being a low rider, we're gonna be a high rider. Yes, now we're talking. I am the weirdest looking monster truck in the history of monster trucks. But in reality, I have made this thing drive 10 times better, because look at this. If we want to go around a corner, wow, it actually has some cornering capabilities. And honestly though, who does this? Who takes a regular economy style car, rear wheel drive swaps it, and makes it a low rider? I have no idea, but it's very interesting, ain't it? Anyways, we're done with that one. So now we're gonna go to one that looks even more interesting than that somehow. This one has all kinds of nonsense attached to it that we gotta look at. So what body parts are modified on this version? Basically all of them it seems like. Everything about this thing looks completely ridiculous and I absolutely love it. I can't even point out all the different pieces that have changed because there's so many of them so you just gotta admire its beauty. And when you're done admiring, then you can take it for a bit of a drive. And again, it's another rear wheel drive swapped configuration. And as you can tell from the hood exit exhaust, it is a V8 engine. How can you tell? Well, usually when you have a hood exit exhaust, you have one pipe for each cylinder and you got four on each side. So that's probably going to be a V8 configuration. Also, it sounds like a V8. So if this isn't a V8, you can call me out and say, YBR, you were wrong. But I'm willing to put my money on this being a V8 and that being a pretty good crash. And oh my goodness, look at that front bumper. It is huge when it falls off over on the rear oh that rear suspension is done for isn't it oh yeah this is terrible it's gonna drive sideways and it's gonna pull to the side at the same time that is not something you want out of your vehicle and we can't even go that fast i'm trying but it ain't happening so i want to see what happens when you do a low speed impact with these massive bumpers and this bridge is actually the perfect place to test this out because we can crash both the front and the rear easily Ooh, that thing bent a lot. All right, check this out. We're gonna go a little faster. Oh, that was enough to just completely remove the rear bumper. Wow, put it back on, right? Yeah, it doesn't quite work like that. So those bumpers aren't very good at staying on. What about in a front impact? Engine broken. Even with a gigantic front bumper, it cannot protect the engine apparently. So we'll get off of the light pole a little bit and then we're gonna take a look at the next configuration. This one is the camber tune. And this one's really cool because it has a lot of camber, but more importantly, it has underglow installed. Oh yeah. And really, the amazing thing about this version is with this much camber and the ridiculous looking wing, 
it actually handles good. I expected it to handle terribly, but nope, this straight up just handles good. Oh, check out the underglow here on this wood. Oh, it's going through the wood so you can see it down below too. That is cool. But we need to get out of the dirt so we can admire just how well this thing manages to handle. I think it's just on the line of too much camber. Like this is so close to having too much camber where it negatively affects the handling, but it doesn't. It has just the right amount. Although maybe it would handle even better with slightly less. I don't know. All I know is I like the way it handles. And let's try to really cut this corner tight. Maybe we can kind of pop it up onto two wheels a little bit. Yes, there was the underglow lighting things up. That was cool. We got to get this thing in the air again so we can see the underglow. Whoa, that's really weird. It almost seems like when the underglow covers a lot of the road, the game lags a little bit. I don't know what's up with that. That was strange. Anyways, let's get ourselves back onto the road and then onto the next configuration. This one is the donk. And we have a couple of different donks. We have the regular donk, but then we have the fast donk. And why would you want a regular one when you can have a fast one? And you can't admire how beautiful my donk is when it's covered in shadows. So let's bring it out to the sunlight so you can see its true beauty. Look at that amazing fitment on the wheels. And if you think it looks good from this side, check it out from the front. Because these tires are basically rubber bands on the wheels. And the wheels are actually bigger than the tires, which just looks really absurd. But somehow it manages to drive looking like that. Although it does drive a bit unusually. And I really don't know how to describe exactly the way it drives because it is so strange. It's kind of like you're driving on ice but very tacky ice. It's just when you drive this thing, you know something is not quite right, but you have no idea what it actually is. And oh no, come on, get back on the road. That's why we have big tires. It gives us the ability to do some off-roading just like that. No, it doesn't. Oh, we're cutting this too close. Yes. Actually, the big tires did help right there, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, we might have bottomed out and scraped our front bumper more. And the donk, he's too pretty to crash. You can't crash a magnificent vehicle like this. But you know what you can crash? You can crash something like this. This is the what the hell special. So this thing is really, really weird. On the front, we have the donk tires. On the rear, we have drag tires and a wheelie bar. And it is rear wheel drive. But even with nitrous, it doesn't seem like it makes enough power to make the wheelie bar needed at all. Because look, we're flooring it, going as hard as we can. And it dips a little bit, but it ain't using the wheelie bar at all. And also the suspension, it likes to roll at any moment. All I did was just hit my brakes too hard. And it's like, yep, time to roll. And that did break the front suspension a little bit, but it fixed itself and it's bad. It's not driving in a straight line. It doesn't really matter though, because even driving in a straight line, you can probably find a way to tip this thing over. Look at that. We were basically driving a straight line, and it still tipped over. Yeah, I did force it to tip over. That's just to prove a point. It is great at tipping over and looking unusual. Anything else? I, I don't know. Maybe it's good at being pretty durable since it does have a roll cage in it. As you see here, we are rolling at vicious speeds, but there is minimal damage to the vehicle until we smack into the pole. All right, Maniac Mobile that I can't even drive for more than 10 feet without rolling over, you are done. Get out of here. It's time for something new. And the something new is the other, other wide body kit. And this one, we're not going to do too much with it. It just has a bunch of cool parts all over the place that you can take a look at. So you can see on the rear, it looks different. The side different. And then, of course, even the front is different. With all those changes, it almost looks like a completely different vehicle, honestly. But at its heart, it is still the Ford Focus or the Gravel Vertex, as it's properly called. But... It's so hard to call it the gravel vertex and it looks like a Ford Focus. Oh, here's a good crash. Oh, that was a perfect side impact. Basically impaling the vehicle. We can't see it too well because the bridge is in the way, so we'll save it, reset it, and then load up the damage. Uh, wow. Yep, that was a perfect side impact. You can't do better than that if you want a side impact. And the front looks okay. Rear looks okay. Yep, just the side was damaged. All right, now on to the next configuration. And this one is kind of funny because in order to understand this vehicle you need to know about another vehicle so i'm going to spawn him up and then i'm going to put him on the road so you can see him next to the inspiration vehicle so the inspiration for the demon is the other demon this is the 200 bx demon edition this is a stock vehicle that comes with the game and look at that they're twins i don't know it's just hilarious to me 
They, they look so similar even though they are completely different vehicles. It is adorable. It's like a little brother. You know, I'm going to make my car just like yours, big bro. And then he actually does it. And it turns out surprisingly interesting. Anyways, we're done with big bro. Get out of here. Wait. Uh, for a second, I was confused. I'm like, wait, what happened to my car? Oh, yeah, there's an invisible car somewhere on the map still doing invisible car things. So next up, we're going to be taking a look at the truck engine swap. And with this one, we have torque. How much torque? All of the torque. We also have a terrible weight distribution because we have so much weight on the front of the vehicle. But this is literally the engine from a T-Series strapped into the Ford Focus. And the weight distribution is so bad, if we slam on the brakes, the rear end of the vehicle will actually lift into the air and do a stoppy. And that's not just a small stoppy. That is a massive stoppy that actually rolls it onto its roof. That is an absolutely terrible weight distribution. So when you slow down with this thing, you have to be careful not only of locking your brakes up, but also braking so hard that you flip the vehicle over. It seems like if you steer at the same time, that will work to help it make it where you don't flip over like that. And instead, you just have the rear tires lifting into the air a little bit. That seems like a perfectly fair trade-off. So watch as I go around this corner and watch that rear tire. It lifts up into the air a little bit so we lose traction so it kind of skitters and scatters across the road a little bit. It is not the easiest to control because it's kind of like a drift car but very unpredictable because the rear wheels can lift up so easily. Like with the wheels lifting up, what's it going to do? I'm not quite sure. Just hold on. With this one, with all this torque, you know what we need to do? We need to do another stoppy. No. What we need to do is we need to test its hauling capabilities. Now I could just get a regular travel trailer and attach that to the rear, but that's only 2,400 pounds. I want something heavier than that because the normal vehicle could tow that. So instead is to go and just attach a full vehicle to the rear. And when I say full vehicle, I mean a full vehicle. We're getting this D series that weighs almost 6,000 pounds. And the way that we're going to attach it looks really janky, but it's probably the best solution that I can come up with for the situation. Because we don't have both sides of a trailer hitch. We have one side. And more than likely, the side on the truck is taller than the side of my car. So we're putting a traffic cone between the two, so that way it'll levelize the two vehicles so I don't have to worry about the height difference. Because otherwise, if I attach them tow hitch to tow hitch, my car's rear wheels would probably end up in the air. So good luck trying to tow something when your traction wheels are in the air because you're not going to get anything done. And you can actually see right here, there is a small difference in the height. So the cone should help. Oh man, it can't do it. Is the parking brake on the truck? Let's see. That might help. Parking brake off and come on. Torque. So it turns out we have so much torque that unfortunately we just can't put the traction down because you don't have enough weight on the vehicle. If we get moving, we can actually move, I bet. It's just getting moving ain't easy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this guy in reverse and just accelerate just a little bit. And then I start driving with mine and now we can actually pull him along once we get moving. There we go. Although I gotta stop the truck from trying to like reverse over me. So we need to go back to the truck and then disable the fact that he's accelerating all the time. Now he's perfectly at idle and we're gonna try to pull him along. And we could definitely yank him, but the weight of the truck is too much. So unfortunately, even if you think it's going to be great for towing because it has a big T-Series engine, there's more to towing capabilities than just the engine. And I'm getting a little bored of East Coast USA, so let's go ahead and swap out the map real quickly and head over to Utah, USA. And the first version we're going to take a look at of Utah fits perfectly with this environment. It is the Rad Max, which is inspired by the Mad Max vehicles, and it fits perfectly because both of those take place in driving in deserts. Makes sense to me. So you can see this one has some abnormal modifications. It has a roll cage, and then the fragile glass windows have been replaced by metal, so it's much stronger and ready for doing Mad Max-like things. Although this isn't really the perfect location for this, it's close enough in terms of stock locations because you know what we can do with this? We can drive it to the upper parts of a mountain and chuck it off the edge and see how strong is it. So this is another V8 rear-wheel drive swap version, and it does have a supercharger as well. And you can definitely tell it is rear-wheel drive with me sliding a little bit there. It makes good power, and that's without the nitrous. If you need more power, there's also the option for nitrous. But I don't need any more power 
to jump off the edge of a mountain. That's 100 miles per hour. That's good enough for me. And we're going to see what does it do. Getting some good damage to it as it bounces around. Ooh, you are so lucky you didn't continue falling. But you know what? I don't believe in luck, so continue falling. You don't get to stop. You got to keep going until you get to the very bottom, and there's still quite some ways to go. This ain't the bottom yet. Keep going. Now the car is wrecked. And before we flip it over, you should take note that it does have some side exit exhaust. And now we'll try to flip it back onto its wheels so we can take a look at the roof and see how well it held up with the roll cage and the reinforced windows. As you can see, all those extra reinforcements do a very good job of keeping the central area intact. Everything around it is pretty badly destroyed, but central area, it is strong. And interestingly enough, you can even see there's reinforcements in the trunk as well. So bring it back up here, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the next configuration of the vehicle. And the next one is ridiculous. You put a ram plow on a car this tiny. Is it going to work? Well, let's find out. And really, the best way to test this is if you have some AI to slam into. So let's go ahead and spawn them up. And there's a car immediately in front of me. Smash the car immediately in front of me. And woo! That looked a little bit interesting. It was like it was sliding a sideways maneuver, almost like it was strafing. I think what's happening is sometimes the ramp digs into the ground a little bit, so we don't actually have any steering, so we're basically on skids. But we still have steering most of the time, it feels like. It might just be under very specific situations with bumps in the road. I don't know. That was weird. But either way, this is working surprisingly well. We've already bashed a few cars in, and we're still driving, so we're going to keep on bashing until something breaks. And that was almost 100 miles per hour, and there we are kind of sliding along again. I'm able to remain in control somehow. That's what's important. Do we control it? Yep. And we can keep on bashing. Here are a couple more hits. Just shoving people out of the way. So it works surprisingly well with the ramp plow attached. Honestly, this car is holding up a lot better than I expected. Because these are some serious impacts. And there is damage, but it's still driving. That's the impressive thing. Impact after impact, but it's not quitting. Like, we are going 60 miles per hour easy on those things, and it just keeps going. Although... Of course, right as I say that, the engine broke, but that's still way more than I expected. Maybe the ramp plow is directly attached to the engine. I don't know. But we no longer need all these AI cars, so we can go ahead and get rid of all of them. And then I'll bring him back up to the road so we can take a look at the next configuration. And this next configuration, it doesn't make much sense, and it's kind of two vehicles in one. It is very, very strange. It's the Vertex Double Decker. So yeah, it's literally a car on top of another car. And for drivability, it's better than you would expect. I thought this thing would be super top heavy, but it's also just heavy. So you're not gonna go that fast, but even doing an aggressive maneuver at 50 miles per hour is not enough to roll it over. And one thing that's fun is you have an interior camera on the downstairs car, and you can see the front bumper of the car above you, which is really weird. But then you also have a camera in the upstairs car as well, so you can see everything from there. You can do whichever way you prefer. Either way, this thing is going to jump off of a cliff and get wrecked. It's kind of funny, like you have two cars crashing in sync as it rolls down the cliff. Although that's not the case anymore. I am free from the other car and I can continue driving if I could put down the power, but I can't at all. We are way mangled up. So we're going to just try to get it back up to that dirt road. And then the next version we're going to be taking a look at isn't going to really be about the driving. This one's about what's attached to the roof again. This is the Cannon car, which apparently weighs 9,000 pounds. So with this, it's basically the normal Cannon that already comes with the game. But it's strapped to the roof of a car so you can shoot the Cannon at whatever's in front of you. And you can line it up much much easier and faster a point i'm not really going to demonstrate because there's not much lining up to actually do ambulance is in place now to shoot the cannon it's not the normal control you have to do shift and spacebar so we'll use eight times slow-mo and the cannon makes a big fat mess so we can't look at it from behind the car we'll look right here and then shift plus spacebar it fires and then boom it blows up everything just like the normal cannon would, but it does end up seeming like it shoots higher up just because it's on top of a car. And you see the car does recoil a little bit, but really, the car is surprisingly stable for having a cannonball shot out of it. So this is parking brake off and fire, and it rolls back a bit, but only at about 8 miles per hour, so that's not bad at all. Also, with it weighing so much, 
it does make the vehicle very top heavy to drive. That's why it has those little stabilizers on the side, which do a little bit. It's still easy enough to just roll it over under the right situation, but they help. Like right there, they definitely help. There some, but watch this. You can't stop me from rolling over a vehicle. I'm going to roll it over no matter what. What if you had a vehicle where the cannon's weight was low to the ground and it was fast? That'd probably be crazy. So let's do one more hit with the cannon because this guy is still parked here. And ba-boom! I don't even get to see the hit. I don't care. I just wanted to shoot the cannon. And now we're going to take a look at the next configuration. And this one is one that makes absolutely no sense at all. This is the fidget spinner. What does it do? It fidget spins. Seriously, that's all it does. It spins in a circle and that's it. What is the purpose? Well, it's amusing, just like a real fidget spinner. I could watch this for a while before I get bored of it. It just spins and spins and spins until it wrecks itself, and it, but it keeps spinning even after it wrecks itself. Okay, now we're spinning too fast. The camera is starting to freak out, and everything's starting to freak out. The physics doesn't know what's happening anymore because I don't know what's happening anymore. That's just confusing. But yeah, that's what the fidget spinner does. If you're careful, you can drive it without activating the thrusters. Why would you do that? I'm not quite sure. I mean, I guess you could drive for a little bit and then spin and see what happens then. But you see, the spinning is so violent. If you're not on a perfectly flat surface, you're probably going to get completely wrecked because you will completely lose control of the vehicle. If I did that dumb thing where you just have a random clip at the start of the video, it would be this clip right here. And I'd be like, why is this car spinning so much? Find out in this video. But I don't do that. Or do I? I could. I'm gonna. You can't stop me. Fidget spinner, you are done. And originally I wanted to go to one that requires paved roads, but there aren't any paved roads here. So we're going to go with a Rally i5 version until we can find some paved roads. Yes, I clicked the one that said asphalt. I wasn't reading. I'm illiterate. I don't know what asphalt is. I just know it sounds like asphalt. <laughs> Leave me alone. We're going to find the paved road soon. Trust me. This is rally enough because the next car we're going to be taking a look at really would struggle through here, but this is still fine. This is no struggle at all. And one thing that's really amazing about this car, though, is how many engine options you got. You got the base version, you got the V6 swap, the V8 swap, the inline 5 swap, and then the next vehicle we're going to be taking a look at is even an electric version. Whatever kind of engine you want, there's probably a configuration for it. So this car is done but it made it all the way to the paved roads, just barely. So now we're gonna take a look at the electric version I was talking about, and this is the electric track day version. And the name there really is self-explanatory. It's an electric version of the vehicle, and it's designed for track racing. Now this isn't a track, but it's a surprisingly smooth road, <laughs> ignoring how it looks. It looks like it'd be really terrible, but it's surprisingly smooth, and it works great through here. And honestly, I'm really expecting electric cars to come into their own for hill climb things like this sometime soon. Because you could do really interesting things with something like that. If you only need five miles worth of driving or something, you can have a really small battery or tailor make the battery size to the course. So you could probably have a really lightweight vehicle with a lot of the advantage of his electric vehicle. Probably? Like, I've never really looked into it, but I'm just thinking aloud here. That has to be something that's happening or is going to be happening more in the future right because taylor making battery size to courses sounds like a really smart thing to do apparently somehow we ruptured the fuel tank that is a little bit interesting for sure and you can actually see into the engine bay it doesn't have an engine there because it's an electric vehicle but apparently it still has a fuel tank installed somewhere that i did not realize so the next couple of vehicles i want to take a look at we need a big straightaway. A straightaway so big it's not often on almost any of the maps except for things like grid map. And now we're going to take a look at the most ridiculous versions of the vehicle. First, the ridiculously fast. This is the Dio Valenti spec and with this one we have over 5,000 horsepower. Yeah, that much power. And it shows because look we're already over 200 miles per hour and we are still pulling. This thing is so fast the banks on this corner are not steep enough for the kind of speeds that it can achieve. We can try very, very hard to stay on this, but we probably won't. What we really need is a perfectly flat surface instead, and yeah, that's bad. That might happen because I think this car does some really weird things with aerodynamics. So just watch the way it bounces off the ground. 
See, like, did you see how it just lurched up into the air and it bounced left and right a little bit? It looks a little bit strange, but that's what really allows it to get to the maximum speeds that it can handle. Because we were going fast on that oval, no doubt about that, but you know what? It can go a lot faster. So this is 250 miles per hour already, and it's still pulling, and it just keeps pulling, and it keeps pulling, and it just doesn't quit. 350 miles per hour, 400 there, and oh yeah, we got seventh gear too, so we can keep going, and if we start to run out of speed, well, there's always nitrous. We don't need it yet, but it is an option. So we are almost at 500 miles per hour, and what happens when you get to the top of gear seven? Go to gear eight. Yeah, you got another gear for that. And then you saw there, the trunk did kind of just glitch up and cause the car to go into the air. Now you can even remove the trunk to go even faster than that and you use a nitrous. You're gonna reach ridiculous speeds, but 500 is already pretty dang ridiculous if you ask me. So there's just a couple more funny versions of the vehicle we're gonna take a look at before we finish things up. So the first funny version is the meme. And this one just has all kinds of wacky stuff on it. That's why it's called the meme. So we have a beautiful haircut on it. And then we have all kinds of beautiful memes on it as well, all over the windshields. Find your favorite meme. Is it there? If not, oh well. Make a mob that adds that meme. That's all we're going to do with it. I'm just taking a quick look at it and then we're done. Next up, we're going to take a look at a car that doesn't make any sense at all. It is the broken one. And it's kind of hard to choose because all the pictures have no car there. And I don't know what's up with this car. It doesn't look that out of the ordinary it just looks like some kind of weird race version but if you actually try to drive it i have no idea what it's actually doing all the time so it just did that like what was that why did it flip over i'm not really sure but it just did or if you try to put it into park it goes 300 miles per hour and catches on fire why i'm not really sure but it did i'm gonna say that a lot about this car if we accelerate forward and we accelerate hard enough it's gonna pop a wheelie. Why? I'm not really sure, but it did. That's what this car is. I'm not really sure why it does that, but it does that anyways. So that is a wrecked version of the car. It's just a strange car. I don't know what else to say about it besides, yeah, it's strange. So we're gonna finish things up with everybody's favorite map, Leap of Death. And for Leap of Death, I know the perfect version to use. It's a version you haven't seen yet. It's a version that's perfect for Leap of Death, though. It is the Vertex Airways. So, yes, it has wings on it. Does it fly? No, not really, but it has a little wing on it. Look how cute it is. It looks like it could fly. It doesn't, but it looks like it could. So, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to floor it and then let it go. And <laughs> The wings already flew off. Again, don't worry. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change how it flies through the air. At least, it shouldn't change it significantly. Either way, we hit the ramp so fast, we're not going to hit anything else on Leap of Death except for, like, the one big impact and then some scratching along the floor wherever we crash i'm pretty sure flat and into the water so that's gonna do it for this video until next time this has been ybr and remember if you like or dislike this video i will know i can tell by how many configurations there are for the gravel vertex so do the right thing and i'll see you next time